Series. We're headed to the second half, and the Warriors have a 50 to 48 lead over the Mavericks. Marv Albert, Steve Kerr, Pam Oliver looking back at uh, the first half. Uh, the story for Dallas, the offense, Jerry Stackhouse, who did it coming off the bench for 18 points. And how about Baron Davis, despite that strained hamstring injury suffered late in the first quarter, he comes on and puts up 13 points in the second quarter. Well, Davis was incredible, but you know he had to take some difficult shots to, to get those points. The problem for Golden State is once he got injured, they lost the pace, the tempo of the game. Uh, the game is no longer chaotic now that you know, Davis isn't healthy defensively. He's not able to push the ball. This is a Dallas tempo, and unless the Warriors can continue this incredibly hot three-point shooting, as you look at the halftime summary, uh, I think they're in a little bit of trouble here because uh, this is not the type of atmosphere and the type of tempo that the Warriors need to win. Here's Jackson. Oh. Barnes gets to it and pops it out to Richardson, but it's waved off. Barnes was out of bounds as he came up with that ball in the scramble. Let's check it with Pam Oliver. Mar Baron Davis got right into the locker room for some more treatment on that hamstring strain at the half. The Warriors say Davis used the time to stretch. Coaches say the key for him will be to force people to come since he can't penetrate. Avery Johnson said, we're going to go after Baron. Tap him a bunch and make him have to work really, really hard on defense. Back to you. Well, that has been the problem at the defensive end. Here's Howard trying a three-pointer. And back comes Barnes. Oh, beautiful pass, Jackson to Barnes on target. Looks like Barnes is in pain. He's playing with a slight pull. Now, with both Davis and Barnes laboring, I don't know how many easy buckets like that one they're going to get. It's up to Dallas now to maintain the tempo, control the tempo, make good decisions offensively. Here is Terry. And the other concern for the Mavs, Dirk Nowitzki, only one of 10 from the field. Richardson gets inside. Nowitzki has to be careful because he is playing with two fouls. Dirk's been out of the offense. Well, you know, he's been completely out of rhythm. And, and sometimes with a, a shooter like Nowitzki, who, who relies so much on rhythm, they, he's not a technically sound shooter. He's way off balance on a lot of his shots, fading away. A little tougher to get out of a run when you're an off-balance shooter. Foul is called on Golden State as Terry made his cut. Foul on Barnes. That's his third. Well, Dallas really going at Davis. You see Terry getting into the lane. The foul there on Golden State. But in the previous possession, Davis got an ISO with uh, ISO with Terry, and the same thing there. Three in a row, trying to get at him. Shot clock out of three. Howard, yes. Warriors lead by two. Baron Davis hit his last four shots at the end of the second quarter. Barnes, oh, what a rejection. Emphatic block by Chop and the save by Barnes. Able to deflect it off Terry. Well, Sagana Chop has now played 25 minutes. His numbers aren't great, but this is what he's out there for. He's clogging the lane. Warriors aren't getting a lot of easy buckets like they were the last five games, and a lot of it has to do with Jop's presence. Baron Davis scored 11 of the last 12 points in the second quarter for Golden State. Nice setup from Davis for Beatrice, and if Davis backpedals, you can see that he is hobbling. Harris picked up, picked up on a switch, now going at Davis, able to whip by and scores on the reverse. What a beautiful move. Well, they switched Davis over from Terry to Harris, and as soon as Dallas recognized that, they went right at Davis again. Foul is called on Terry. It's kind of a, a, the same philosophy that Don Nelson has. Avery Jan Johnson kind of using the, the Nelly philosophy, go at the other team's star. The Warriors have gone at Nowitzki defensively this entire series, or offensively. But now the tables are turned, particularly with Davis's hamstring problem, because he's normally an excellent defender. There's the third foul on Terry, and now Harris, who has had foul difficulties throughout this series, is called right there as Davis try to make his move along the baseline. For Harris, only his first. You know, this game is there for Dallas if they want it, but they're not right. You can feel, I mean, they're not smooth at all, and they leave Jackson open for a wide-open three. 
Lakers for the 59-54 lead. They've hit 9 of 15 from beyond that three-point line. And if I'm Avery Johnson, I think I'm going to go back to the man-to-man -man a little bit, especially because Davis isn't as big of a threat to penetrate. Nowitzki from way downtown. Nice hustle there by Howard. But then a foul is called as Davis was tripped up. Howard was going for the save, and then the, the scramble continued. The foul is charged to jump. And for Dallas already, that's three team fouls. Well, you heard Stephen Jackson at halftime talking to Pam Oliver. Pam asked him, what do you need to do to win? He said, we've got to share the ball, we've got to defend better, and we've got to let our crowd take us home. Well, the crowd's in it now. Jackson from straight away for three. Yes. Avery Johnson wants to talk it over. Season premieres Monday, June 18th on TNT. Steve, the question is, what is going on with Dirk Nowitzki? Just one for 11 from the field. And the other day had that mystifying quote that we'll get to in just a moment. It's an eight-point Golden State lead. Here's Howard for three. Warriors go to a 3-2 zone out of the timeout knowing that Avery Johnson was going to draw something up against a man-to-man. There's -man. Harris, and he is blocked by Davis. All right, here's what the Dirk had to say prior to game four. I wouldn't say we're worried, but our backs are against the wall. If we lose game four, this season is pretty much over. This is the potential MVP, the probable MVP, the guy who's supposed to be your alpha dog. Even if you're down 3-1, you know, we saw Phoenix come back from 3-1 last year. Eight teams have done it, and you just, you hate to see that if you're a Dirk's teammate as far as a confidence standpoint. Well, the Mavericks did come from behind with that dramatic run, and trailing three games to one, did take game number five, but in a hole right here. Howard knocks down a three. Josh Howard has played well. 16 points for Howard. It's a 62-57 Golden State lead. It's a shootout, three-point shootout. You see Richardson posting about Terry, and the help comes from Stackhouse. A defensive three-second violation, which will lead to a, a technical foul. Well, the Warriors have hit 10 of 16 from downtown. Dallas, 8 of 19. Steven Jackson, 5 for 5 from beyond the three-point line. He's tied his playoff career high for three-pointers made. It's his fourth time with five. So he's five for five from three-point land, 0 for seven on two-point shots. And one of those guys who just doesn't really care. I mean, he, like Baron Davis, same way. Another three from Jackson. Now that is a new playoff career high for three-pointers for Steven Jackson as the Warriors extend to a nine-point lead. It matches their biggest lead of the night. Beatrice with the rebound. Barnes runs the floor. Leaves it for Jackson, who fires. Yes! Jackson has scored the last 13 points for the Warriors in the midst of a 13-3 run. And when I said Steven Jackson doesn't care, I mean it in the best possible way. He doesn't care about missing. It doesn't matter if he's missed five or six in a row. He's still going to fire away. Same goes for Baron Davis. 
And even with Davis hurt, the Warriors have gotten back to that mentality that they had for most of this series. They're just letting it fly. 20,677 here at Oracle Arena in Oakland. It's an all-time record crowd for the Warriors, and we're told it marks the largest crowd to ever witness a basketball game in the state of California. What emotion and what energy from this crowd here in Oakland. And Steve, even when this franchise was going through its lean years, the crowd still came out. You have the enthusiasm. Not quite what we're seeing here <laughs> in recent weeks. Not quite, but I think it's the best crowd in the NBA, and they deserve what they're getting right now. It's been a long time coming for Warriors fans, 13 years to be exact. A call by Steve Jabby. Away from the ball. It's down the Warriors. Foul on Jackson. That's his third Avery Johnson. As sent on Jerry Stackhouse, Austin Crozier is in for the first time as Dirk Nowitzki is up front with Crozier. And Howard, Crozier had a good one off the bench the other night. Here's Crozier getting inside, and he is stopped. Davis playing on one leg. Davis puts the move on. Beadrench is fouled. You know, Marvel, I talked to Flip Saunders last week, and I asked him about what was going on in this series. And he said, you know, Dallas is kind of going through what we went through a year ago. Remember the Pistons won, what, 65 games, I think? But they, they spent the month of April basically playing meaningless games, and it cost them in the playoffs. They lost their edge. I think the same thing has happened here to Dallas. They spent about three or four weeks, you know, resting guys, not playing for anything in particular. You know, they, they, they struggled down the stretch. They went six and four. You know, meanwhile, Golden State had to fight and claw its way into the playoffs. They won nine out of ten, and you can see the difference. I mean, Don Nelson's team playing with great energy. They, they're playing with an edge. Dallas has lost that edge, and we know what happened to the Pistons even after advancing last, last year. We'll see what happens with the Mavericks. Funny it did affect the Chicago Bulls when they won 72 games. Oh, Michael Jordan was around. That's a little different story. Here's Stackhouse running out. Crozier with the rebound. Crozier comes up short. He was looking for contact. Davis to Barnes. He lost the handle. Oh, the roof would have come off of this place if he had made that one. Crozier. Rebounded by Beadrin. Coming up on five minutes. Remaining in the third, Davis able to penetrate. Baron Davis, despite the hamstring pull, put it on the floor and was able to go right at Jason Terry. Golden State has opened up a 14-point lead. And Avery Johnson does not want to use another timeout. He's got to save some for the end of the game, but he may need one the way his team is playing. Novitski had it knocked aside. It's a 15-3 run by the Warriors. Beatrice and Barnes late in coming to the front court, and the uh, three Warriors had to wait for the rest of the squad to make it up court. Shot clock down to six. Davis whips by Nowitzki and is fouled by Crozier, and Davis and Crozier having words. Former uh, high school teammates. Look out. Mark Wonderlich gets knocked down. Remember, Crozier and Baron Davis both went to crossroads high in Santa Monica. And remember, the almost the same thing happened in game five when Davis drove baseline. Another hard foul, very clean foul from Crozier. No reason for Davis to be upset. But the emotion in here is unbelievable. And that would not be a good exchange if you had two guys ejected and one is Baron Davis pretty good trade for Dallas nothing personal against Austin <laughs> we, we love Austin but they are handing out double technicals it has been a very testy series total of 15 technicals see 272 fouls four disqualifications all on the part of Golden State. 
Several ejections. And you know what's shocking to me, Marv, is the way Baron Davis is going around these Mavericks defenders, even with the pulled hamstring. I mean, their defense, the Maverick defense, has completely collapsed. You see Nowitzki go to the bench with just four points, one of 11 shooting. They are so out of whack right now. It is shocking. Including the playoffs, the Warriors have won nine of the last 12 games against Dallas. Six of eight this season, including the postseason. They swept the season series, three zip, including uh, two blowouts by 17 and by 29. Both those games here in Oakland. And back in March, they were the ones who snapped the Mavericks' 17 game win streak. 73. 57 Golden State with 415 left in the third. Job lost it. Richardson with Stackhouse picking him up. Jackson off the fake is fouled by Howard. So Jackson to the line. Let's go to Pam Oliver. Pam. the Warriors star Steven Jackson at the line is two of three at the free throw stroke. And what's happened here in the third quarter, Mark, they've gotten back to that chaotic style that suits them so well. I, I watched the game last night in Phoenix and, and Craig Sager came on the telecast. He called the, the Suns offense, uh, I think it was organized chaos or uh, organized chaos, I think was the term. This is just chaos. I mean, it, there's not much structure involved with what Golden State does. They just go. And they've got the motor running here in the third quarter. The crowd is into it. This is unbelievable. In this series coming into tonight. So, you, you know, he's a guy who's going to make four or five mistakes. But he's also fearless with that jump shot. Warriors have outscored the Mavericks 25 to 9 in this third quarter. Dallas only 4 of 13 shooting. Warriors 8 of 11, 4 for 4. From beyond that the three point line, Dirk Nowitzki, who has been invisible, continues to sit. Crozier fouled as Barnes tried to knock it aside. That's 4. On Barnes, fourth team foul called on Golden State. Mavericks are over the foul limit. So Avery Johnson goes with Harris and Terry at the guards with Crozier, Jop, and Stackhouse up front. And at what point do you get Dirk Nowitzki back into the ball game if you're Dallas? Here's Terry for three. Jackson tips it. Handled by Beardrin. And here comes Davis. Beardrin's playing another big role here in the third quarter with that rebounding ability. Davis met on a switch, played by Jop. He goes at him, and a foul. Uh, he got the penalty now for three and a half minutes, and Darren Davis knows that. So as soon as he gets that switch on Jop, rather than settle for the three, he attacks and earns two trips to the foul line. Coverage of the NBA playoffs continues. Friday on ESPN, it's game six of the Raptors and the Nets starting at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. And then Sunday on ABC, game seven, if there is a game seven between the Nets and the Raptors. Nets looking to conclude matters on Friday night. But if the Raptors win, it goes to a seventh and deciding game. And that will be seen on ABC. Or game one between the Nets and the Cleveland Cavaliers, followed by game one of the Spurs. So that cover starts 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. A 20-3 run by the Warriors. Golden State stays in this 3-2 zone. And what's the call here? Stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds. So they get the baseline shot that they're looking for, or at least that baseline area where Stackhouse was so effective in that first quarter. But then he just steps right out of bounds. Here's Jackson for three. But a whistle had blown 
as uh, Jackson released the shot. Tell you what, that might have counted, too, because the call happened simultaneously. Question is, were they fouling Biedrich on purpose there? I mean, this is a little early for a hack of Biedrich, if that's what you want to call it. Well, he's only a 55% free throw shooter during the regular season. He did make a couple in the first half. As you mentioned, has that unusual release, the line drive shot by Biedrich. So he's three of five at the line. But what are you telling your team here if you're Avery Johnson? I mean, th this is a club that has changed its identity under Johnson the last couple of years. You know, they've become much better defensively. But this is waving the white flag a little bit. This is basically saying, we can't stop them. We're going to foul Biedrich instead. Dallas scoreless the last four and a half minutes. And they're down by 21 with just under three to play in the third. Stackhouse. And they cannot find the range. The ball back to the Warriors as Michael Petrus checks back in. And he gets a huge ovation. Well deserved. Not only knocking down those free throws, but 12 boards on the night to go along with 12 points. He's been a defensive presence in the lane. And Dallas goes back to the zone. They immediately trap Davis. Here's Barnes. Oh, a facial over Nowitzki. 18 unanswered by the Warriors. This is extraordinary. Stockhouse able to lay it home. You know, and if you're wondering, you know, where's Dirk? Golden State has done a terrific job in this entire series of surrounding him. They're playing his zone, but they're shading Nowitzki every time. And he's one for 11. It's easy to say, well, go to the hoop. Tough to go to the hoop against his zone. Richardson for three. And that went over the backboard. So the ball back to Dallas. Well, this is something Dallas did at the end of game five. They went at Davis with a trap, but this is not what Golden State did. They settled for jumpers in that final three minutes. Don Nelson told his club, if they do that tonight, we attack the rim. And obviously, Don Nelson, the man who traded for Dirk Nowitzki when he was head coach of the, of the Mavericks, knows Dirk very well, knows all the tendencies, and that is certainly been an advantage in this series. Loose ball foul is charged to Stackhouse. They went over the limit very early, and that has hurt. Well, take a look at what Golden State is doing to Dirk. They're playing a little 3-2 zone, but you see Richardson's not going to leave him. Petrus isn't going to leave him. Steven Jackson with an arm on him. Now Petrus, no matter where he goes, and no matter what defense Golden State is in, man-to-man -man or zone, they're laying in his lap, and he just cannot get out of that trap. Warriors with free throws 12 and 13 in this in this third quarter. And now nine for 12. Dallas has not been to the line here in the third. That 18-0 run ended just a moment ago, but it has been total destruction here in the third quarter by Golden State. And I'll tell you, the other thing Golden State has done well, they've kept Devin Harris in front of them. Remember last game, Harris broke three for 16 points. A lot of pit points late penetrating to the hoop, but tonight, not much going to the rim for Harris. And here is Harris, fouled by Petrus. That is his first. Dallas has outscored Golden State 32 to 11 here in the third quarter. So Harris to the line with a minute and 33 remaining in the third. From exclusive courtside interviews to encore performances of the Emmy Award winning inside the NBA, log on to NBA.com for TNT Overtime's excellent playoff coverage. TNT Overtime, the basketball broadband panel that's on all the time only at NBA. Com. I'll tell you the other problem with Dallas 
shooting so few free throws here tonight, Marv, is that when they shoot a lot of free throws, they're able to get their defense set up at the other end. They can slow the game down. They can control the tempo. When they don't get to the line, Golden State is able to get out running and create the pace that they like. And they were second in free throw shooting at 81%, but a team that does not get to the line frequently. And uh, tonight we're looking at nine free throws overall, six of nine. That's it. Here's Davis for three. Rebounded by Howard. Harris open for three. Yes. Devin Harris with the angle shot from three-point territory. The Warriors 82, the Mavericks 63. Couple of big plays from Harris. They're getting to the line, then knocking down the three. But your Golden State, that's the man you wanted. You want shooting from three-point range. Here's Davis going glass, going right at Levitsky. And, and I like that much more than that three-pointer he shot on the previous possession. He knows that Dallas is over the limit. Foul-wise, he's got to continue to attack. 20 points for Davis. Howard is left open for three. Petrus comes away with it. Nelson wants a two for one here. He never slow it down. Davis got the step. Davis. Rebounded by George. And Harris pulls it back. Nowitzki gives it up. George for three. Here's the outlet. Barnes to the hoop. And foul. Foul by Harris. You know, any other coach in the league in that situation would have said, pull it out, let's take the last shot. But on that replay, or on that uh, long rebound, I looked over at Don Nelson. There was 13 seconds on the game clock, or there is now. It's about 16 when they got the ball. He's waving to his team, go. We've got the advantage. Continue to attack. And I like the mentality. That's what got them the lead in this series in the first place. And remember, they got away from that late in game five, and that's when they lost their aggressiveness. But Steve, getting back to Dirk, Nowitz Dirk Nowitzki, one of the leading candidates for most valuable player honors when you talk regular season. Dallas in a huge hole here. He has attempted one shot in the third quarter. Well, we saw that at the end of game five. He, he had not attempted a shot in the fourth quarter and until those two late threes. So I think at some point, you know, you're the MVP. You got to at least fire a couple of shots from long range. Just, just get a shot up. Here's George. And that's the end of the third quarter. The Warriors outscore the Mavericks 36 to 15. And Golden State could be 12 minutes of basketball away from pulling off the biggest upset in the history of the NBA playoffs.